Ms. Andrews, are you okay? Definitely not. I'm actress Valerie Alleen, and I play Amy Andrews in the new film, The Empty Space. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. <sighs> Violent attack leaves her without her boyfriend, her home, her sense of self. Amy, like so many of us, suffers from mental illness. As she tries to get her life back together, she's haunted by terrifying visions that may or may not be real. Empty space goes beyond the slasher and takes you deep into the void. We hope you join us as our film premieres on streaming. We also hope that not only are you frightened, but you gain some insight into a serious problem that affects so many people, including the filmmakers. I know how it sounds. What if it's real? The Empty Space, a terrifying new vision from director Andrew Hara. guys welcome to a very echoey <laughs> a very echoey episode of the podcast um we are we have another guest so last time this is all audio this episode's audio so you're not gonna know who the guest is right away unless you read the description which nobody does um so last time we did exorcist series you know our famous exorcist series that you guys loved and totally checked out um we covered exorcist to the heretic and William, that was like a day William had to go. And so we needed a guest because what are we going to talk? Just me and Josh. It sounds boring as hell. And so I asked Leslie to jump on, but because we had planned to have her do another episode and then it didn't work out. And so I don't know how to count time. And so we had her do The Exorcist, but she didn't get to pick her movie. So we, uh, that we're making up for lost time. And so that's what we're doing today. Also, I already said her name, but we are in it. We have our special guest, Leslie Gonzalez. Again, welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Yeah, how's uh, how's the photography and the cinematography been going? I have been on a constant grind, <laughs> nice. but you know, it's it's been going good. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, one thing is that our short, I don't remember if our short was out at this point, but if it wasn't, go check out the clown show that Leslie DP'd. It's on my YouTube page right now. And there's a link right here. We're going to find out if I actually remember to put that link, but check it out. Um, so today on today's episode, we're covering the film Pieces of April, which is from uh, 2003. It is PG-13. I don't know why I said that. It was directed by Peter Hedges. It's his only writer, uh, or it was his first. I think he's gone on to write and direct other things, but this was his first writer-director. I think it was his, also his directorial debut. He went on to write like Dan in Real Life, and he directed that one. He also wrote The Good Dinosaur, or like helped on it. And then he's done a bunch of other stuff. It stars Katie Holmes. It stars Allison Pill. It stars... Um, Patricia Clarkson. It starts Derek Luke before he did Save the Last Dance. Um, and it stars a bunch of people that you've seen, like uh Alice Drummold, who's like the old grandma, but she um she like you if you know her, you've seen her, but I don't know if you'd recognize her name. But before we get into why Leslie picked this film, Josh is gonna tell us exactly what this movie <laughs> Oh, it has Sean Hayes. Um what is it? Okay, so April and the pieces of her are making a Thanksgiving dinner for her family and it follows the family trying to get to her apartment and her trying to develop this Thanksgiving meal as, as everything goes wrong. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of the gist, you know, things happen between then and there, but that's kind of the whole story. Yeah, what else? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's funny to say what else from now on um so leslie why did you pick this film um so it's it's been my favorite movie for a bit and i think that's just because like april as a character is so relatable to me like i've i don't think that i've ever resonated with a character more in a movie 
Interesting. Interesting. Also, it's funny that like, yeah, we wanted this to air on Thanksgiving, but now it's gonna air for Christmas. It's the same. They're the same holidays, guys. Corporate media doesn't want you to tell, doesn't want to tell you that. Um, but interesting. So yeah, I thought this movie, I think I had seen it like a long time ago. I remember liking it, um, but I, I hadn't remembered it. I just remember that I had Katie Holmes and Alison Pill. Um, right. But yeah, I watched it again. I thought it was very interesting. The director like based it off of a story he heard um, about uh, like the people in Manhattan having to use different ovens to cook their Thanksgiving turkey. And I think that like that kind of does a good job of framing the movie. So it kind of, it feels like another film that I saw recently called Borderland, where um, the protagonists go from location to location. So it almost feels like a road trip movie, but she's just kind of going up and down her house or her apartment right. complex, which makes it interesting. But she's like running into different people. And then you also have the family kind of coming in. But overall, it's a very interesting film. And it was also only made for $100,000. Apparently, the director only got paid 10 bucks, which is like, it's <laughs> way more than I get, buddy. I don't think you can for that. Um, but like the fact that this was $100,000 and it was filmed in like Manhattan, it's, it's very impressive. Josh, what did you think of this film? Uh, it was good. It's very, you know, I didn't I didn't look up anything about like the writer director, you know, Peter Hedges. Um, but it's funny that he did Dan in real life because it's almost like when I was watching that movie, I was like, Oh, it's kind of weird how like there's not a lot of conflict here whereas in this movie it's almost like oh why are these people being so mean to april <laughs> like yeah. she doesn't she doesn't deserve this kind of like a uh, constant like struggle in her life you know she's just trying to yeah. make dinner happen um, well, it's, so it's almost fun it's like the yin and yang you know it is interesting because he did like uh he started with uh what's he didn't Gilbert Grip, with johnny depp and leo and, you know, Pieces of April is kind of his last indie film before he starts doing, like, Dan in Real Life. He did Ben is Back, which was trending the other day. Um, but I do think it's interesting because those movies about a boy, um, Dan in Real Life, uh, you know, Ben is Back, The Odd Life of Timothy Green, those are all, like, those feel like Hallmark movies almost, you know, where it's very, like, yeah, like the, like what, what conflict is there is very yeah. like kind of low key. Like, oh, the family loves each other, and this one was like, oh man, this family. Is... And that's what I was gonna say. Like this family and this movie feels super authentic, even though it's like yeah, stars a bunch of eccentrics, but all those eccentrics feel like they could live in the real world, and so it's interesting that he kind of did this one, and then it's kind of like gone to making more studio pictures where the characters feel less realistic, but. I think it, it works in this one. I think it's probably why I haven't liked some of his other movies, just because they don't feel realistic. And when you're telling a story like these, like the ones that he kind of likes, you need that realism, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I got into um, a bit of an argument with a friend of mine because we were comparing pieces of April to Lady Bird. I don't know if you guys have also seen Lady Bird. Yes. But I yeah. think that that was definitely like one of the biggest reasons why I was more leaning towards pieces of April was because it felt like so real you know and yeah. it's so like non-confrontational at the same time and I just I love that yeah I think like and it's funny you bring up Lady Bird because Lady Bird has that same problem especially when you compare it to like Frances Ha or Mistress America or one of my favorite things about Greta Gerwig is that she knew how to make and this movie does it too when you have characters like this, like these kind of characters that if you if you write the wrong line, it's going to make that character super annoying and everyone's going to hate that main character. <laughs> so you have to be very smart about how you present them. And the way to do that is to, like, again, to me, the only way to do that is to be real, is to make them as realistic as possible. And then you kind of see, like, to me, that's why Lady Bird doesn't work as well. And of course, you know, now Greta Gerwig's making Barbie, which is literally about a toy. And so, like, she's kind of managed to, like, write it well, but you have these kind of, like, oh, they kind of jumped off, but I almost always will like their independent, this feels super, almost too realistic, and there's nothing that really happens, it's all, like, internal dialogue and internal conflicts that makes it interesting where, like, uh, you know, I think, again, I think, like, if I was watching this movie and it was more, not put together, but more, like, commercial, I think, uh, I, I don't like, think it like would a ten work. million dollar budget kind yeah. of yeah. Right. 
Yeah. I know I get that. And and to me too, I think part of the authenticity is like, I feel like if someone was telling me this story at a party, it seems fully believable. Like everything that like would happen, you know, yeah. like obviously like um, some of the neighbors, like uh, Jack from Will and Grace are more ridiculous than others, right. but like realistically <laughs> ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, just, again, to kind of like reiterate, April is kind of like the odd person out of this family. The family doesn't seem like they kind of don't really delve too much into the other lives of the family, which I oh, I actually like. It's kind of presented as it is. Because like, again, in movies, you're never going to like, be like, oh, how was your job as film liaison? No one's ever going to say that. They're just like, how was work? You know, and so that helps add to the, like a brother is never going to ask his sister a million questions that helps the audience, but doesn't really make sense. Um, but like April's this odd person out and so they're going to visit her but like the family's kind of had this like relationship with April where it's a little bit standoffish and like the mom like they asked like they're at one point which was a very sad scene that's kind of presented in a humorous way but they're talking about like oh what, what was the last good memory you have of April or do you have any good memories with April and like the mom's like oh this time and they're like no that was me <laughs> and then they're like <laughs> Oh, this time like no that was also me and it's kind of like it it just feels like they don't feel like they hate each other but it kind of feels like that way that family does where it's like oh man i want to talk to this person for a while you know we we also haven't mentioned the mom is straight up dying of like cancer and right. that's part of the reason this is a big deal like okay she's this might be the last thanksgiving and then it's like can they reconcile things and yeah like allison pills the other daughter who's like the good daughter you know yeah um, well and she's the overbearing daughter and i think it's interesting their dynamic because you can see the rivalry even though they really don't spend any time together but you can see the rivalry between uh allison pill's character and katie holmes's character also was allison pill supposed to be older uh i don't know because sure. in, in that story where they're talking about the good memory of april allison pill says something like that was me, because remember, April was only six when we moved to wherever they were. I feel like I feel like movie va- ages are so vague that it could go either way, unless they explicitly said it. So I don't know. And they might it might be that thing where they they're very they're close in age yeah. and they hate each other, <laughs> <You know? laughs> or or they have that like sister thing where they can't stay at each other. You you get the sense of you know. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the very realistic thing. I mean, um, more. Like one of the things that I really liked is at the beginning, uh, Patricia Clarkson who plays the mom is sitting in the car, like, let's go, you know, like I want to go visit April. Um, And you kind of like, you're a little bit unsure as to why she wants to go visit April because they have such a weird relationship. But I think like, so at the very beginning, Allison Pill like gets in the car and she's like, oh, how do you feel? Oh, well, did you do this? Did you do that? And I know like that just, that scene felt so realistic of this kind of like, I've even, you know, when your family member is sick or when you're sick, you have to answer the same question like a million times to the point where you get annoyed, even though you don't have, like, even though there's not really a reason to be like, they care about you. So that's why they're asking, but it's like, man, I don't want to answer this stupid question again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. what? Um, what's, I don't know, the, the mom, Patricia Clarkson, she, I mean, obviously she, she plays bad mother so much, but she just yeah. knocks it out of the park, you know? as the bad mother but and you're like, okay maybe there's something there you know like it's yeah. it's not all bad so when it really does show you how good patricia clarkson is as an actor because she's i mean it's it's a pretty easy role that she could just walk into but she does a very good job and she kind of plays it again like she plays it like everyone else which is very kind of small which adds to it where like her other roles when she plays like the evil mom Usually she plays it very big, which works, but this oh think, yeah, like like the sharp objects. She made was smart, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Mm-hmm. Um we even even discussed the uh ridiculous side plot that April's boyfriend, Bobby, goes on his <laughs> his his adventure through town with Cisco as uh, as his friend. Yeah. How can we for how how can we forget to mention Cisco? <laughs> And I think, like, again, it's so funny the way this movie works. Even, like, when I was living in Portland and me and Josh were, like, for Thanksgiving, 
it was kind of like I was doing something and then me and Josh met and then I went back and Josh, I think, went with his wife's family. But it felt very holiday-ish that everyone's kind of doing like a, a very separate thing, but they're all trying to meet at the same place, you know? Yeah. Right. Because it's like when you do Thanksgiving, it's like, oh, can, oh, I forgot the Cokes. Can you go grab them? Or like, oh, can you go do this? And it's like, everyone's kind of on their own journey until they get together at the end, you know? Yeah. It seems like just this long string of like side quests. Mm -hmm. I feel like another movie that it reminds me of, like because of that reason, is Bottle Rocket, where it's just like it's so aimless, you know, but you're you're kind of like you find yourself rooting for the characters so much. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what really like cements it is that they spend enough time, especially at the beginning, really setting up everyone. Like they set up how much uh, Katie Holmes and uh, Derek look like each other and then they're setting up the family dynamics and so as like things change and like they meet new people and this and that it kind of helps that we already know the family so that we know like when you know when uh Katie Holmes walks into uh Sean Hayes's like apartment you know like oh she she can handle herself because that's kind of what she's been doing this whole time you know and so mm -hmm. it, it adds it adds another level like how nice they are you know right what did uh what did you guys think of how the movie was shot? The movie was shot. Um, I liked it. It it adds again to the authenticity. It feels very like home movie, you know. Yeah, it feels feels very like oh IFC. I I know you know yeah. this is definitely right. an IFC film. It so. reminds me of a classic cinema called Greg the Bunny that was also shot on video. <laughs> Does it remind you of Greg the Every, Bunny? Everything reminds me of Greg the Bunny at one point or another. <laughs> Greg the Bunny, guys, go watch. What did you think, Leslie? No, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I mean, you can you can tell that the budget wasn't like so big from the way that it was shot right away, but I think it works, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like again, uh, going back to Borderland, um, one of the things, because we had originally said like, oh, well, we'll do, we had to do um, handheld in the car, but we we're like, oh, well, but we'll do on sticks, like when they go, like er at every stop they make. But we quickly realized that it would be way too different, like having so much of it one and then having it so much of it another, like it wouldn't feel like an artistic choice. It would just feel like we had to do it that way. And it would look bad in my opinion. So we went with all handheld. And then I was like, if it's going to look bad, it's all going to look bad. And I think um, that, that they kind of figured that out too, because they're going, like, this is clearly shot on location. And so, you know, in a tiny New York, like, this is what two single people would live in 2003, they, there's not a lot of space. And so, like, I think that they wisely chose to kind of keep things moving, like, keep the camera moving because it a makes it feel like you're part of the family like you're like in following april but also because of where they were shooting the budget and like how they had to get it all done i think it was like an 18 day shoot it it makes sense to do it handheld but i think like they managed to also make that fit into the theme of the movie which which just works all over you know mm -hmm. yeah and i think like even though it wasn't big budget you can definitely still tell like um like the intention behind the aesthetic shots I guess like there's that one shot that I really like when the grandma first gets into the car with the rest of the family yeah. and it's just a shot of like the the mom in the passenger or front seat and it's her face in the mirror and then like you can also see the grandma's face in the back of the mirror and it's kind of just like so it's both of their faces like right next to each other and it's it makes you kind of think, you know, like, wow, like the mom who has obviously been diagnosed with cancer, like she's never going to get get to that age. So, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the shots are very smartly done. Uh, there's a shot later at the end where the mom separates from the family and they show the grandma and she's just like kind of looking through the window and her face is cut in half. Yeah. And it just kind of feels like it instantly visually tells you like, oh, the grandma's going to know something that before anyone else, you know? And so I think like, even though a lot of it is handheld and a lot of it is kind of run and gun, I don't think they used any actual lighting. I think it's all natural. I do think that they really put a lot of thought into the shots. And so it all, it all feels 
good. Like there's a scene where Cisco kind of sneaks up on um, on Derek Luke, and you see him before Derek Luke does, and so like they kind of do that thing where he like tricks him into thinking it's like someone else. And but because we see that it's Cisco, it kind of like introduces him as a friend before anything else, which is just smart framing. Like that's just good blocking. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you know their relationship like right away, right? Um, and I think they do that with everyone. Like, Allison Pill's first shot is her, like, she can't get her dress up and she's like already complaining. And like, it's you just see her in the mirror, you know, you don't see her actually. And I think that's, um, you like, you just see her back. And I think again, that tells you so much about that character without having to say anything, you know. There is almost like, because you're talking about like, uh, you know, like she's seeing like, it's like, you know, her eyes in the mirror with the grandma where she's like, oh, Mm -hmm. I'm like seeing what's not going to happen. You know, I'm never going to be this old. It's also like near the end of the movie when, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll do spoilers, whatever, you know. It's not really that kind of movie, guys. It's it's a 75 minute movie and it's on Tubi. I would go watch it, but we're going to spoil it. <laughs> no, okay, so so uh, the family like rolls up to, and that uh Bobby's been beaten up by a gang of white kids. <laughs> okay, a gang of, uh, of white kids who want to be black kids. Because they're yeah. like with like uh like they're in a like a real gang, but they're just all like dorky white kids, yeah. They're they're like Jamie Kennedy in most Jamie Kennedy things <laughs> from the early two thousands, but He's like, oh, April's gonna be so happy, but he's bleeding out of his mouth, you know. And then they, they like freak out, and they're just gonna go to a diver diner and like ditch the dinner. And um, you know, the mom Patricia Clarkson goes to the bathroom, and then in the mirror, she sees this other mom with her little right. girl having like a shitty interaction, where she's like, I'll just leave you, you know, like. Mm-hmm. And she's like, obviously, she sees herself, and she sees April, and she's like, oh man, like this really is my last chance. And then kind of. Um, reconciles it and it's almost this weird thing where she's so um mean <laughs> through the whole movie and it's like she's so shitty to everyone like the whole family and then you can almost see like oh she can't like see clearly unless she's like seeing the reflection you know because her life is so I... bad she can only kind of see the good thing out of the corner of her eye you know See, and that's because so I kind of, I took yeah. it a different way. It's like the whole time, um, like, it kind of seems like she doesn't care about April at all. And so, like, that's why you're constantly questioning, like, oh, why is she going? Like, why are they going at all? You know, it just kind of feels like, oh, well, she's going to die soon, so they have to get out there. And, like, the dad is kind of on board, but, like, not really. And he's, like, the most. He's, like, checked out. Oliver Platt, yeah, he's just yeah. playing the most <laughs> d- beaten down man a lot but like yeah. to me that last scene because i think that last scene is like one of the most important scenes uh in the film yeah, yeah. is like to me it was her kind of like realizing that she's like realizing how she's been but also realizing that she's always been april's mom like she's always gonna be april's mom and i think like a lot of her characterization at least to me was based off the fact that she didn't think it was fair <laughs> that she was dying which like she's like 40 in this movie so it's definitely not fair but and so I think like it was kind of her reconciling like oh yeah I've been a kind of a dick this whole time and like let me let me like because the whole time you see April and she's literally like going room to room apartment to apartment just trying to cook this dinner and like they're not even a hundred percent sure that the family's gonna go you know and so she you see her putting in all this effort as to what as to like just to appease this family that doesn't even really seem to like her and like the whole time everyone else especially uh the mom is kind of like almost getting dragged along for the ride like they don't want to be there as well you know and in the, in the restaurant Allison Pill's like no we did the right thing we didn't need to be there like we did the right thing and then so her seeing the girl kind of reminds her that you do have to like put in effort even you know regardless of everything else and so then she takes off and like she breaks away from the family and she gets like a ride with the motorcycle gang. Oh yeah, that was that was a weird idea. That was definitely a screenwriter being like, "How do we get her there without the family?" <laughs> uh, friendly bikers. <laughs> it was very, it was a very Home Alone moment, but it worked. Um, but, and I think it was just kind of her, like, I'm gonna put in the effort now. Like, let me show you that I'm all. I'm still in. I'm still your mom, and I still like love you, even if I'm not the best, you know, mom. <laughs> 
And so I think to me, that's kind of what that signified. Uh, Leslie, what about you? I mean, it's funny that you brought that scene up, Josh. I didn't. It's my favorite scene in the movie, but I didn't know whether we were doing spoilers or not. <laughs> but I'm so glad you brought it up. <laughs> we always go there eventually. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I love that scene, especially because it feels like kind of the first, like this big stillness in the movie, because mm -hmm. it's like up until that point, it's like just like everyone's you know in a rush and trying to get done what they need to do and when that mom when her mom walks into that bathroom it's kind of like she sees that other person's daughter and it's like you're experiencing you know what that mom is feeling and reflecting on in real time like they really hold on that shot for a second and yeah. I really like that yeah yeah and I think like again you know and talking about this realistic versus unrealistic in that shot, like, we, I mean, we've been discussing it for who knows how long, like five minutes or whatever. There's no, like, I, I could, I can see the Hollywood version of that scene where, like, she tells mm -hmm. a little girl something and the little girl says, like, something else and that's when it clicks. But in this shot, it's just, like, they look at each other. The little girl is almost, like, not freaked out, but she's kind of, like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I gotta get my mom, you know? And so it's... um it's very realistic, but it also like, it it does the same um, thing as if they had had some kind of dialogue, because you still get that same, like she's seen a reflection of her past self, but they didn't have to add anything. And again, I think that's what the film's strength is not kind of not going for easy answers, you know? Right. It's a very heavy film and a very light film at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It kind yeah, of reminds me of Wonder Boys with Michael Douglas, you know. It's, it's almost like too heavy until that scene, because then it's almost like the pressure's out. You're like, okay, the right thing is going to happen. Because I was yeah. like, God, if it just ends with like them separated, and I know it probably wasn't going to end that way, but she had tried I, so hard. I honestly thought it was going to end with the mom, with the grandma seeing the mom leave, and then that was it. Like, you don't know where she, like, you assume she's going to April, but you don't like, doesn't answer that question. Which I thought would have been super cool, but they, they do answer whether they go. I don't know if we'll spoil it. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still, you still end up feeling it's good. Like by movie, that's, yeah. that's what makes the movie work is that yeah. through all the negativity, it all still like finally like kind of coalesces into something good, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think like the end especially works because April has like all the people that's helped her, you know, along the way. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like this April, like it's kind of April showing the family which is underlined throughout the whole movie like they talk about april as if she's like this almost a criminal you know like someone to be ashamed of and the whole movie like the end of the movie kind of culminates in like april showing that she's got it you know she she can handle herself and i think that that's i mean that's honestly the whole question of the movie like what is april going to be okay with all this and like it kind of answers that question in a very in a very smart way. So I like it. Also, like I don't know if you guys like got the sense, um, like Bobby is so positive through the whole movie. You're like, oh, is that like he's such a source of stability that she like he's been helping her like get her stuff together, you know? Yeah. They they describe some pretty horrible things she did in her life <laughs> before that. Yeah. <laughs> It was like like throwing like firecrackers at the other kids or something like that. You know? Yeah, lighting their hair on fire or something, throwing <laughs> matches. <laughs> right. And again, like, yeah, see, and like that scene in the bathroom is so important because again, like it, it shows the mom's frustration, the the random mom. And it but like that's the first time you really get it from the kids' perspective. But like, and I think that that's the thing, you know, especially with kids, when kids like I'm I don't know, I go back and forth, like the, the like punishing kids, you know, I think most kids know what's right and what's wrong, or if they don't, then you shouldn't punish them anyway, because they have no idea. But if they do, I always think it's better to kind of like show them why they, well, what, what they did was wrong. Because like a kid will, mm -hmm. even like, not even a kid, but anyone, when you mess up, you feel bad, you know, you don't feel good about it. And so I think like, going and chastising someone who already feels bad kind of makes them feel worse and like it doesn't help anything and like that's what that scene kind of shows the mom's frustrated of course but like the daughter is 
still like she's almost double punished because she a didn't like she, she kind of messed up a little bit and then like her mom like pretty much abandoned her in a restroom and so i think like again that's something that you don't really see a lot because it's hard to even explain even in this podcast and i think uh, the fact that he tackled it and he did it well that's good job that's a that's a that's a hard thing to do you know those little moments are always hard sure. yeah i loved when when april like went to you know however many neighbors she went to and you know they kind of like really came through for her and they they met her with like the exact opposite of that sternness that her mother would have had you know and they kind of like guided her and like took her through the process of you know how to cook the dinner and everything and I I liked that I feel like there were a lot of moments where you could really see like April's inner child come out yeah yeah and I think like again I don't I meant to bring this up earlier but Josh well, might agree with me he doesn't live in a city anymore but he used to and I used to live in Portland I've lived in LA I still I live, live in, in a city I've lived um, in many cities in my life All right. the difference like between a major metropolitan city like a Portland or a, a, a Los Angeles and like a like an El Paso or a Las Cruces or Josh where do you live not in Portland where do you live I live very close to Portland. Wherever Josh lives in the suburbs, <laughs> it's a very different feel because like you kind of rely on your friends to like help you. Like if I needed help, I would call one of my friends, you know. But when you're in a big city, there's almost this kind of like we're all in this together because being in a big city kind of sucks, you know. And so I remember when we were in LA, like if you needed a cigarette, it's not out of the realm of possibilities to just ask someone around you hey, do you have a cigarette? Or hey, uh, what's that? And they kind of help you out. We're in like a smaller town. You know, you kind of, it's not to say that that doesn't happen. It's just like, if I need help, I'm going to call someone I know. We're in a bigger town. Sometimes you do just knock on a door and you say, hey, can I borrow your, you know, oven? Not Maybe not that extreme, but that is that kind of thing. And so I think it did a very subtle but good job of showing the difference between city life and suburb life. Josh, you, you've done both. You don't do city life anymore, but do you agree with that assessment? I'm very close to the city. Let's, let me be clear. Um, <laughs> you know, I thought it was sick because uh, that there was, there was also a weird part for me, um, not to like break down the movie scene by scene, but Jack from Will and Grace. I, should, I don't know the actor's name. I should. But... Sean Hayes. What? Is he? Sean Hayes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, he steals a drumstick out of spite because she's kind of sarcastic about his health, I, be I believe. Yeah. Like, he's just he's just a dick. Because he's um, kind of weird, and so she kind of returns yeah, it he, and he doesn't like it. Yeah, He's like he's like kind of a, a rich weirdo, you get the sense. He's like as rich as you'd be living in those apartments. And mm -hmm. um, he has like a dog. He's like a fancy boy. He's the only one who lives um, by himself. <laughs> yeah, and he has like the super nice oven, like the brand yeah. new like super oven. Um, and he steals a drumstick, and then uh, she meets this like kindly like Asian family who reconstruct the drumstick leg with tofu. And it is like that's the craziest thing, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it felt very like okay, it all came together except for him. Every everyone's kind of right. Together. He's the one who doesn't get invited. <laughs> that's the day after the credits is him just killing himself alone yeah. in his apartment. <laughs> this is what he was supposed to do, yeah. Yeah, and I think like one of the again a cool thing is like how diverse you know everything is with like the neighbors like the neighbors next door like cooking their own dinner and then like you have that you have uh, Sean Hayes who's not cooking dinner really and then you have uh, the Asian couple and so it's kind of like being able to see all these different people who live in one building again it's just such a good representation like I remember when I was in LA. Like we were unemployed, we we're trying to be movie makers. Uh, the guy above us was like making posters for the Dark Knight Rises, and then there was like a porno guy who did pornos across the way. And so, like, it's just like everyone has these like jobs that you don't even think are real jobs, you know. And I think yeah. that's like kind of how this movie feels. Like, how did all these people find this apartment? You know. Yeah. Cool. We'll say if I have to do if I have to levy one criticism, and maybe maybe you guys will disagree. Her polka dot shirt, terrible, terrible shirt. What? The the pieces of April shirt. I like, I like it to match her hair. 
the polka dots being like faded like i don't know something about it it's just like just off to me all the all the clothes is very early 2000s you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like where everything's kind of wrinkled even if it shouldn't be <laughs> i did have one friend uh that I was talking to the movie about, he was like, you know what, you only like the movie for its like Y2K aesthetic. And I'm like, it's not Y2K, it's literally just the 2000s. Like it's not a replica of the 2000s. It's just that time period. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's, it's just how shit looked, yeah. Man, yeah, it's I like when people- I, I think the shirt kind of goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, see? I feel like I'm the only one, but I was like, I did oh. Have to look at the movie poster though, because yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick it up the first time. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with the shirt, but the fact that she's wearing jean shorts was, was <laughs> that might be valid. Did I notice? That was a cool, you know, that was, was a cool style at the time. But it is like, and that's kind of funny because if you look at her, how she looks, you're like, this is a hundred percent what it like a cool person would dress like in 2000. Yeah, I think we were like roughly her age at this time too. So it's very like, yeah, that's how everyone I dressed, think... you know. She might be like a little bit older. She's like a adult. We were an adult in 2000. She's like, I, I, I get, I get like the sense 20. she's supposed to be barely in it, like in her like early, early 20s. Yeah, that's not that's... how old we were. <laughs> At that time. We were like 19. We I had know. to ask our parents to go to the movies. So <laughs> I don't know where Josh is getting this. We were very mature. <laughs> we were exactly her age. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, yeah, I think um I think overall, no, I think it's a good movie. I think it's it's fun. It's it's almost a really good movie for Thanksgiving because it's it's like it's heavy, but it's yeah. not too heavy. It's funny, you know, it's like interesting. You're kind of like what's going to happen next. And so I think it really works all together. Do you have any criticisms, Andrew? I really don't. I think overall it does good. Um, I think if, if there was any critics, no, I really, I think the way they did the characters is great. I think everything kind of bleeds into everything else. Like even the wardrobe, it works for her character. Even if you don't personally like it, I think the, the camera work works for the movie they're telling. So I think overall, the movie just kind of clicks on every level. Yeah, in a way, it almost like needs to be as low key as it is because if it were bigger, it would be like Dan in real life. You're like, okay, this is like like a lifetime thing, you know? And I think like, if you think about it, it's kind of like other things would be like, if it was longer, if it was more expensive, I think that kind of would take away from a lot of it. I think it's kind of like one of those perfect like i think of like district nine and how they're like oh we're gonna do a sequel to district nine it's like that's not gonna work because that movie works together perfectly you know mm -hmm. yeah but cool any last thoughts on pieces of april go watch it if you haven't <laughs> Check it yeah, out. It's, it's on Tubi. It's under 90 minutes, which I think is always a good hallmark of a movie because everything's three plus hours these days. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very cozy holiday film. Yeah. Overall, good one. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leslie, for joining us again. Next of time, please pick again Exorcist 3. <laughs> More Exorcist. Yeah. Oh, thank God. you guys for joining us. Go watch The Clown Show. Go watch a piece of April. Go watch the empty space. It's over here. Um, and we'll see you guys next. We'll probably see you guys next year on the Bomb Squad. Um, we're still trying to figure that out, but we'll let you know. Or you'll just find out. Uh, but yeah, see you guys and thanks for.